Welcome back to From the Burbs to the Tetons. This is our first of many travel vlogs to come. I think it's appropriate that the first one is going to be about the first national park in the world, Yellowstone National Park. This is going to be a one day trip that I often take to get as many pictures as critters as I possibly can. At the end of the video, I'll just give you some general tips if you've got more time. So if you've got three or four days or a week that you're going to spend in the park, I'll give you some information about things you want to take into account or places you just don't want to skip. When I go into Yellowstone Park from Driggs, Idaho, I usually enter through the west entrance. Sometimes I enter through the south entrance by going through Teton National Park. Going through Teton National Park is much, much slower. Between the lower speed limits, the traffic stopping to look at animals, beautiful lakes, streams, mountains, you just can't go that fast. In addition, most of the interesting stuff to look at in Yellowstone Park is in the top two-thirds of the park. There is a lot of dead time between the last interesting thing in Teton National Park until the first interesting thing in Yellowstone Park. There is a lot of driving in Yellowstone Park and rarely are you going to be near some place that serves food. I highly, 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 highly recommend that you bring lunch, lots of fluids, and fill up the gas just before you enter the park. At the south entrance there is a gas station with a market, drinks and snacks, and a subway next door. This is our go-to place, but I went late in the year, October, and the subway was closed. Most things were. The season ends in September, so check to see what is open and closed. Going forward early in the year and late in the year, you may need to bring much of this with you versus picking it up just before you enter the park. If you don't have a year-long pass, I would highly recommend getting one, especially if you are going to visit both Yellowstone and Teton National Parks. A one-day pass is pretty expensive anyways, and the parks could use the money. Once in the park through the south gate, you only have to drive a little while to see wildlife on the Madison River turnouts. You can often find elk there. Yellowstone consists of two main loops that make up a large figure eight. When I only plan a day trip for taking pictures, I use this path. I enter the south gate, north on the lower loop, east across the middle, continue north on the upper loop, make a right toward the northeast entrance. I usually only go as far as the Lamar Buffalo Ranch. It is a good place to turn around. You will run across the odd critter here and there, so take pictures as appropriate. There are lots of small geysers, hot pools, and mud pots to check out too. I'm not big into those, so I usually don't stop for those. Now the first thing you'll run into is going to be Gibbon Falls. Very, very pretty. I highly recommend you take a chance to get out of the car and stretch your legs and take some beautiful pictures. Canyon Visitor Center to get some gas, eatery, bathroom stop. I usually stop at this location to have lunch and use the bathroom. There is no official name for it on the map, so I'll go ahead and include the Google Maps location. It's one of the highest spots in Yellowstone Park and has a beautiful view. After lunch, I drive the rest of the way up over the mountain. It's not that far. It's about 10 or 15 more minutes of driving. And then you start coming down the back side of the mountain. It's called Mount Washburn North. And there you're gonna see a few buffalo that hang out there, but the wildflowers that grow on the side of the mountain are just beautiful. Um, don't forget to take some time out to take a look at them. Further on is Tower Falls. It's beautiful and worth a visit. I head to Tower Junction and head east on Northeast Entrance Road this takes you right into Lamar Valley. Lamar Valley has the most animals in the park. Lots of buffalo. And the valley itself is quite beautiful too. I've always been a photography guy and this is my first attempt at filming animals. I've learned a couple of things. The most important is that you really do need electronic stabilization or a gimbal. 
The other thing is too is that the inexpensive light tripod that I have is great for photos but it doesn't cut it for film. <laughs> Yellowstone is huge. You will spend a lot of time in the car. Don't try to do too much in one day, especially try to hit too many locations in one day. Not sure what company they contract for the ice cream in the park but it is really good I know that the Lake General Store and Old Faithful General Store have it I haven't been to the Mammoth General Store in about 25 years but they probably have it too There isn't much far north besides uh, Mammoth. Mammoth does have the largest and probably the nicest mud pot fields in the park. There's a lot of educational opportunities there too. So you might want to make that a short day trip or you could try and mix in some horseback riding over at uh, Tower Roosevelt. Uh, Lamar Valley isn't that far away. You could get in some sightseeing uh, looking at the animals. All that might make a nice day trip. easily spend a day in the Lower Geyser Basin and the Upper Geyser Basin where Old Faithful and Yellowstone Lodge is located. Another good day trip would be the Upper and Lower Falls near Canyon Village and then visiting Yellowstone Lake. Even though I don't fish, I understand there's really good fishing in that area of the park. Lots of little gems in Yellowstone Park that I haven't explored. So don't look at my suggestions as a complete list, but hopefully just a starting point. Please subscribe. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up.